well that sort of shows you the process through which we went to make these robots box and dance. Um, so I'll talk you through it. it we used uh, technology that was used to great effect in Avatar. It all starts with motion capture. So these are our, are our boxing performers. Uh, these are the guys that Sugar Ray worked with. And they're wearing these motion capture suits that have all these little gray markers on them. And those markers are seen by about 60 cameras that, circ that uh, encircle this ring. Those cameras feed into a computer which allows us to take that motion and apply it to digital versions of the robots. So this video game uh, quality render is the first iteration in our process. And you see Sean here in the bottom corner holding our virtual camera tool. And what that allows him to do is once the, the boxing um, motion is captured, he can then photograph the sequence in, in the virtual realm in its entirety before we even go to Detroit to shoot the movie. So this, this becomes our template for the sequence months before actually starting photography. So we know what the shots are, how long the shots are, what happens in every shot, and that really helps our on-set efficiency. Where we took motion capture technology to a place that uh, really hasn't been done to this extent was uh, when we did finally go to Detroit and start shooting the movie, we brought all our motion capture technology with us, and that allowed us to take the boxing robots that now exist in the computer and render them and make them visible through the camera to the camera operator and Sean, the director, while we shoot. So while we're shooting in Detroit, this is what they're seeing through the camera. Now, nobody else in the space in this set can see it because obviously the robots are not really there. They're only visible through the camera, but it allowed Sean and the camera operator to photograph the sequence as if the robots were there. But in reality, what they're photographing has no robots in it whatsoever. We, uh, one of the big challenges was helping all the actors and extras out in terms of, since they don't have robots to look at, where should they be looking? So it was a, a low-tech approach, usually with the tennis ball on a stick that we would hold in from behind camera to give them a clue where to look. And then from there, the, the rest of the procedure, which is where the visual effects team, my, my, my team of about 160 people back at Digital Domain here in Los Angeles, our work really starts during post-production where we have to take that motion capture data, refine the motion, take some of the humanness out of it that's inherent in motion capture and make the punches harder, make the robots feel heavy, and then create photorealistic versions of those robots to put in to these backgrounds. And this sort of illustrates that how many layers of, of rendered robot go into creating the final version. And then this next little piece is sort of a, a recap on one shot. Starts with the motion capture, then you have the virtual camera version of the shot, then you go to Detroit and you shoot a background plate. While you're shooting that background plate, you've got what we call a simulcam of the, the robot in that real background. Then we light and render the robot, put it in the background plate, and that's... 18 months condensed into about <laughs> 10 seconds. And then the, the end result looks something like this.
So, here you have it. Hey. Any how questions? How do you scale? How do you get the scale right in the different um, places that they have to be shown in the movie? Uh, good question. Because uh, that was actually one of the things that we had to sort out early on. Because the size of these robots and the size of our performers. Uh, one of the first things we do in the computer realm is scale up all of the, 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 the limb lengths of the performers to fit onto the skeletons of the robots. And in doing so, one of the things we also did with the motion capture data was slow it down by 10%, and that helps give the robots weight and make them feel heavy um, because bigger things tend to move slower and are affected slightly differently by gravity. Um, so, does that answer your question? Well, like when they're in the boxing ring, mm -hmm. how do you make sure that they're the exact right height to compared to the boxing ring, compared to the people? Just oh. Do you calculate? Yes, like and all of the environments that we did boxing in, we had virtual versions of that. We went and surveyed and took photographs and then rebuilt that environment in the computer so that when we did the, the initial version of the fight, we had the robots at the re correct scale in that, in a representation of that real world environment. Um, so, and then when we went to Detroit, we had to make sure that that relationship of the real to virtual was exact so that when they moved around the ring, they didn't go through the chains or float off the floor or anything like that. So there's a lot of really precise measurements that had to be done and a lot of calibration. When we went, it, that location is the old uh, Ford Model T plant, which was a fabulous location, not very pleasant to spend any time in, but it looked <laughs> great. Uh, but the, uh, our technology group that had to set up the motion capture space went in about a week and a half before we needed to shoot there just to get everything set up so that when we did show up to shoot, they could turn it on, we could fire up the camera, and you could see the robots through the camera. Last question. How long did it take to um, do all the effects? I was on the movie for 18 months. Um, and that started in December of 09. We started shooting in June in Detroit of 10. Uh, we finished shooting in September, and we finished visual effects work this past June.